let's come up with the ideal intermittent fasting, aka time-restricted feeding schedule for you. And when I say ideal, I mean, what are the variables that are negotiable? What are the ones that are non-negotiable? What is ideal for you will depend on the context of your life and what you are willing to do consistently. So first of all, we established based on the discussion with Sachin, who is truly the premier world expert in this area, who knows the animal and human scientific literature better than anybody has written this incredible review and for whom I consulted that you do not want to ingest food for at least, I want to emphasize at least 60 minutes post waking up. Second, you want to avoid ingesting any food of any kind, even one gram of sugar. Remember, this is the ideal. One gram of sugar even would be too much for the two to three hours prior to bedtime. He also mentioned, ideally, you are spending eight hours in bed. I didn't tell you that earlier. I saved that for now. But ideally, you're sleeping that entire eight hours. But simply by being in bed for that eight hours and avoiding food after waking for an hour and before bed for two to three hours, you're starting to build out the duration of this fasted period. Remember that the sleep related fasting is particularly important for the health benefits of time-restricted feeding. Again, the sleep-related fasting is especially important because of all the cellular repair processes that occur in the liver, in the gut, in the microbiome, in the brain, all over the body, and because of the way that that coordinates the expression of the clock genes that are then going to wick out and have many other positive effects on health, including weight and fat loss, but in addition to that, liver health, et cetera. An eight hour feeding window as a target seems to be the best target feeding window, at least by my read of the literature and in discussing it with Sachin. Shorter feeding windows of four to six hours tend to lead to overeating and potentially increases in weight. One meal per day type eating do not seem to do that, but those are special cases in that most people can't adhere to a one meal per day type schedule, at least not on a regular basis. And it's not very compatible with most social schedules. Although some people may be able to adhere to that in a straightforward way, but there aren't any robust studies exploring the advantages of one meal per day. So if you feel there are advantages of one meal per day for you, as opposed to an eight hour feeding window, well then by all means, use a one meal per day approach or use a four to six hour feeding window and just make sure you don't overeat in that window. Remember that most people tend to not adhere to the eight hour feeding window. They say eight hours, but they tend to eat outside of the eight hours a little bit on each side. So if your goal is a 10 hour feeding window, you might want to set it to nine hours or eight hours. If your goal is six hours, you might want to set it to seven or eight hours. And this is simply based or I shouldn't say simply, this is based on thousands, if not tens of thousands of human subject data points that Sachin and colleagues have collected. Regular placement of the eating window or feeding window every 24 hours is important. You don't have to be absolutely rigid and neurotic about this, but you don't want it sliding around on the weekend so that it's starting two hours later and ending two hours later a couple days a week because then you start to offset many of the positive health effects that have been demonstrated for time-restricted feeding. Remember, if you eat your food within a certain feeding window, but that feeding window shifts by a couple hours, it is effectively like jet lagging your system. It is effectively like traveling a couple time zones over, eating there for a few days and coming back when in fact you're not traveling. And that's because of the way that food adjusts these circadian clock genes. Now you can offset some of that through the use of light. And I've talked extensively about how to use light in previous podcasts, but again, early morning and all day bright light exposure as safely as you can, ideally from sunlight, not through a window, et cetera, avoiding bright light in the middle of the night, extremely important for mood offsetting metabolic dysfunction, et cetera. Not incidentally, Sachin's early work 
was he was one of the three co-discoverers of the cells in the eye, the so-called melanopsin cells that set the central circadian clock. So he was a pioneer in that field, which led him to be a pioneer in this field and so on. When should that eight hour window be placed within each 24 hour cycle? Well, let's talk about ideal. Ideal, if you really want to maximize all the health benefits of time restricted feeding, you need to extend the fast around sleep on both sides. You would place it smack dab in the middle of the day. It would be a schedule in which you started eating, for instance, at 10 a.m. and you stopped eating at 6 p.m. An absolutely dreadful schedule for anyone that wants to have some semblance of a normal life. In my opinion, it's not really compatible with most schedules, although some people might be able to do it. 